Hey everyone, and welcome to the Dota 2 Builds of the Week, the weekly series where I show you guys top 5 meta builds to help you get started learning new heroes in Dota 2. As always, a link to my Twitch is down in the description below if you'd like to join the action live, as is a link to each of the builds I'm discussing today. Moreover, if you'd like to support the series, hit the like button. It's free and it actually helps out a ton. It's all that YouTube cares about. And if you'd like to recommend heroes for future episodes, let me know in the comments. It's not just YouTuber bait, I'm actually interested in hearing your opinion. Regardless, Faceless Void Position 1. Now, what's interesting about this video is that we're actually recording before the Arlington Major, which starts in uh, August 4th, if my memory serves me correctly. But anyways, we're recording it before, and we're seeing a ton of Faceless Void in Pro and High MMR pubs. And it's almost looking like Faceless Void is going to be a contested hero at the Major. And so let's talk about the updated build that the pros are utilizing in order to make him kind of more viable in the current meta. So basically, the way it's being done right now is uh, the traditional build had you kind of stacking stats early on with multiple slippers of agility, and then you just sell them off once you rush Mask of Madness. But now, most pros are actually building a value Wraith Band. From there, they're going boots into power, uh, sorry, power treads into Mask of Madness, which allows you to farm very rapidly. Moreover, it's worth noting, I did do a complete beginner's guide on Faceless Void to teach you from the very basics. I'll link it up above for those interested. But I'm going to talk you through the updated uh, build today. Uh, then we're going Maelstrom. Maelstrom is like almost exclusively what uh, Faceless Void's building, mainly because Mjolnir is extremely, extremely powerful. And uh, in talking with a lot of my high MMR friends, like, like basically pro level friends, um, they've talked about how like Mjolnir is actually kind of overtuned and they're expecting it to get nerfed. And so any hero that's building Mjolnir right now, including something like Arc Warden, for instance, which has an incredibly high win rate, uh, he also builds a Gleipnir, but whatever, um, is, is having a very high amount of success. And Faceless Void is kind of one of the beneficiaries of the very strong Mjolnir currently. Now, what's changed in the past is that Faceless Void is now building his shard early before BKB, which is beneficial to his utilization of Time Walk. From there, Scotty is pretty much what more or less everyone builds. And, uh, you know, there's also a couple variations as well. Uh, some some people, if they have really good free lanes or even actually terrible lanes and they want to try and find a, catch, a way to catch up in, in the late game, they're building Hand of Midas. Uh, you're also seeing a lot of uh, Butterfly against the current meta, which includes Position 1 Sniper. Uh, he's a great counter to Position 1 Sniper. Uh, you're also seeing a lot of people building a Refresher Orb, so you can use multiple instances of Chronosphere, which stacks wonderfully with his level 20 talent. Regardless... Faceless Void's in a really interesting spot right now because we're kind of anticipating him being a major part of the Arlington Major meta. Um, it hasn't happened yet, of course, so my prediction may be totally wrong. But it looks like he's having a significant uptick of uh, kind of activity before the Major occurs. All right, so this is another interesting one. Like we started last week, sometimes with the mid position, we're going to utilize a couple hybrid heroes. And Templar Assassin is exactly that. Now, what I'm showing you today is going to be a mid Templar Assassin build, and I'm going to give you a couple ideas of how the core position one version is just slightly different. But overall, what's happening right now is Templar Assassin, especially in the Pro and High MMR meta, is being played in both a flex position of position one or position two, actually seeing a lot more play currently in position one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss how those builds kind of differentiate from each other and give you an up-to-date build on how to play Templar Assassin. So essentially, this is the core mid build. You're going side blades into refraction, value point of meld. The difference with carry um, Templar Assassin is that meld is usually being taken at uh, uh, level one and side blades is usually taken at level eight with meld being taken in between refraction. So you're actually focusing in on meld and refraction as a position one, as opposed to side blades earlier on, which you do for mid. That is one of the primary differences that I'm seeing in the current pro meta. Uh, from there, of course, uh, you know, if you're in the safe lane, you're not building a bottle, but if you're in mid, you are gonna be rushing bottle. Other than that, it's pretty much the exact same. You're going Wraith Band, Power Treads, and a Blightstone, which builds into your Desolator. Uh, because of the amount of physical damage uh, that TA outputs, Blightstone early is just super valuable. Um, it really amplifies the amount of damage potential, especially harassment potential you have in lane, especially with the early point in Meld. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go into Desolator, into Blink. Once you have your Blink, you're basically online with your Deso. Uh, consider taking Roshan early and often. And then once you get the Shard, which improves the uh, capabilities of your uh, Psy Psychonic Trap, uh, which I said incorrectly, uh, Psionic Trap, uh, what you're going to do is actually increase the silence effect and it also increases the vision range. 
you are going to be good building into BKB because the last thing you want to be able to do is get locked down with spells, especially spells that damage over time, which completely destroy refraction. So Vipers, uh, Ignite from uh, Ogre Magi, anything that kind of ticks away at your health dazzle, for instance, anything that kind of ticks away at you destroys refraction, right? So the BKB is very necessary in order to maintain your survivability. From there, depending on the game situation, you got to make a choice. A lot, first of all, a lot of carries are building Ring of Basilius early uh, so they can utilize uh, refraction and melt basically off cooldown uh because the mana requirements are kind of high especially uh, high especially for melt especially as you level it up it's a low cooldown but it has a relatively decent mana cost i mean 50 mana is not that much but it's on a five second cool cooldown at level four uh, allows you to kind of farm a little faster uh from there you know mkbs against evasion heroes uh very popular is orchid into bloodthorn so that you can kind of uh you know effectively kind of gank and uh disable uh, enemy supports stuff like that and really kind of set up numbers of advantage for future fights scotty ever so popular and lincoln sphere is great against some heroes that try to uh lock down templar assassin and is being built on like some some pros are building Lincoln Spheres very often on TA, which is pretty interesting to see. Uh, I've also talked to High Memoir players who think Lincoln Sphere is one of the worst items in the game. So I'm including it there because I am seeing it built on TA, but uh, you know the verdict's really up on that one. But anyways, TA right now is in a really interesting spot going into the major. You're seeing her being played at both position one and position two. The build does vary slightly, but the core meta game, uh, sorry, meta item progression is nearly identical for both positions. Are you toxic as hell? Well, then maybe you want to play some Viper offlane. Wow, what a great joke. But anyways, Viper offlane is currently pretty high in the meta right now, but there's an old saying that goes with Viper. Viper, you win the lane, but then you lose the game. Viper's mid game is kind of super awkward, but there have been some changes to the way that Viper is being played, which help to accelerate his early game that make his mid game a little more solidified. So I'm going to talk about exactly how that's done right now. So basically, the way Viper is being played right now from the off lane is you are taking some stats up front, a mango, even you might want to sneak in another mango as well if you can, but you're going double Wraith Band into uh, Brown Boots, Urn of Shadows. Some people are even taking the Urn of Shadows before the boots, which is kind of risky because you really need the boots because Viper's primary weakness is getting kited. If you're getting kited, then you can't apply a poison attack. If you're not applying poison attack, what the hell are you doing, right? So the boots are kind of important, but I have seen a few Urn of Shadows rushes in the past. Why? Urn of Shadows stacks with the damage over time of poison attack, Viper Strike, whatever, right? So it ends up being this immense damage over time that is able to secure kills in the laning stage and completely ruin the, the, uh, the safe lane um, game like completely because every safe laner when they see viper they're like oh my god i don't want to play this game anymore but viper eventually kind of falls off so what people have been doing is they've been building this urn of shadows they've been building power treads into d lance bkb from there they are going the shard however what's important to understand here is after the shard a lot of people are actually going back and completing the spear vessel why? Because a lot of tanky heroes are really popular in the meta right now. You're seeing Bristleback safe lane, Bristleback off lane, like basically Bristleback just carrying games. You're seeing a lot of these tanky kind of cores, and what's happening is that Spear Vessel is a valuable kind of um, counter to those types of heroes. They, it forces them to build things like uh, um, Lotus Orbs, sorry. Uh, and anyways, regardless, Spear Vessel is a good transition into finally what is a Hurricane Pike, which is a natural kind of progression to from Dragonlance. The problem with Viper is being a ranged hero, you now lack an initiating kind of core, right? He's not an axe, he's not a beast master or anything along those lines. So usually he works well with like mid tinies or, you know, anybody that likes to kind of like initiate fights, uh, you know, any, any hero really like that, but, uh, Regardless, Viper's an interesting spot right now because you are seeing him pick quite a bit. His, his win rate is kind of middling, uh, but he does a fantastic job in the laning stage. But the real trick is whether you can transition your laning stage into a successful mid and late game, which Viper traditionally has not excelled at. Skyrath Mage position four. Now what's interesting about soft support right now is that there's a lot of focus on doing a tremendous amount of damage as early and as quickly as possible. It's one of the reasons why Zeus is seeing so much success at position four. We're expecting him to get nerfed, especially with his mobility, but he does a tremendous amount of damage at pretty much all stages of the game. If he has mana, he's outputting damage. That's essentially what Skywrath Mage does as well. So you're seeing this kind of fixation on position fours that are capable of doing tons of damage. So Skywrath, back in the meta. 
basically the way he's being built right now is you are taking concussion shot shot early on with ancient seal and value points and arcane bolt now there is an alternative build that a lot of pros are actually starting to move towards now i left this build like this because i think it's more beginner friendly uh, it's actually what i focus in on my beginner's guide which i'll leave linked up above where i talk about skywrath from the complete be basic so if you're learning dota from the basics and you're playing position four uh, click the video I just linked up above because it talks through everything you need to know about Skywrath Mage. But this build focuses on Concussive Shot. Alternatively, there's other builds that actually take a value point of one point in Concussive Shot, and then they focus on Arcane Bolt with a value point in Ancient Seal. The advantage to this is if you can sustain your mana pool, you have a two second cooldown on, each, on Arcane Bolt, which allows you to basically do a tremendous amount of damage really quickly. Obviously, the int damage scaling is not particularly exciting early on in the game, but the base damage is significant enough, especially on a two second cooldown. However, it's 90 mana. Concussive shot, 95 mana or 80 mana at level one. So you're looking at kind of like a mana management situation. So that's why, if you're brand new to Skywrath Mage, I recommend that you start with this. However, if, as you get more comfortable managing your mana and playing the hero, uh, you do technically do have more damage potential running arcane bolt and ancient seal as your primary focuses early on in the game it's just something i wanted to mention okay anyways the starting items you are going double uh double mantles into a circlet double null talisman pretty consistent for a while people were dropping the second null talisman and then now it's back people want the second null talisman into rod of Eidos because that is the traditional build 2700 mana uh gold sorry and gives you a little bit of added lockdown which obviously works well with mystic flare however there is a build that a lot of pros do like as well and that is the e-blade you skip rod of Eidos altogether you get e-blade the slow effect allows you to basically land your mystic flare anyway especially when paired with concussive shot however it's literally double the gold so if you are new to dota and you're new to skywrath mage like the trick basically is is instead of using rod of Eidos to land your mystic flare what you're doing is you're silencing, you're using Concussive Shot. As soon as Concussive Shot lands, then you drop your Mystic Flare because Concussive Shot, uh, sh uh, shot sorry, slows by 40%. And then you eventually get to your E-Blade. But you, it costs double the amount of gold. So bear that in mind. There's a bit of a kind of like, there's a couple different builds with Skywrath right now. But if you're brand new to the hero, I do recommend you run the Rod of Eidos build that I've shown up above here. It gives you pretty much everything you need. If you are more advanced... You can skip this Rod of Eidos. What you can essentially do is you can go your Boots, and then you can go E-Blade. Okay, you can even skip your Aether Lens if you want. But E-Blade, and then what that E-Blade will essentially do is it'll make you do, like, it'll basically make you blow everyone up one shot, essentially. It makes, it makes you one of the highest damage capable heroes in the entire game. It is really cool, but it's a little more advanced. But regardless, that is Skywrath Mage, and, um... Make no mistake, I think that one of the most important things for new players to understand with Skywrath Mage, I know I've, this has been like a little more of a more confusing segment, is if you're brand new, start with the simple stuff. Get to your Aghanim Scepter, which is an absolutely fantastic Ags. It basically doubles the effect of all your spells. Hits additional targets for all your spells. And then as you get comfortable with the hero, then you can start experimenting with, you know, your Ghost Scepter into E-Blade combos and stuff like that. And that's what these talents are built for as well. We're building health because as a new player, you want that ad survivability because Skywrath, if someone goes on him, he just dies, right? Ancient Soul cooldown, absolutely tremendous right now, especially with the mids like Void Spirit, Quap, and all the popular mids that really revolve around mobility. Uh, Anti-Mage is gaining popularity as well. Faceless Void, he jumps in, you, you uh, silence him, you literally can't cast Chronosphere. Well, then, you know, of course, then he just BKBs, but whatever, you know what I mean, right? A lot of utility with silences, really valuable hero, and one that's seeing a lot of play in the current match. All right, so we don't spend a lot of time talking about Crystal Maiden, which is a damn shame, because she is like one of the most popular heroes, especially for new players in Dota 2. But I feel like she's wrongfully recommended to new players, because she is extremely squishy, she dies very rapidly, she has no inherent mobility, and uh, she's challenging from a mana management perspective. So a lot of players, they kind of get baited into trying Crystal Maiden, because like they feel like, oh, it's a support, she seems easy enough, and then they just feed. They feed a lot. And you get reported and you get sad and you end up back in league and you're wondering what the hell you're doing with your life right so let's talk about how crystal maiden is now being played so wait the way crystal maiden is being played now and this is her meta has like shifted multiple times in the last couple months because the last time i spoke about her the build was totally different this is the updated build she's being she's being played like a position five tanky initiator basically um basically what you're doing here is you're taking a value point of crystal nova you're taking Focusing in on Frostbite early on with a value point in Arcane Aura. Why just a value point, you might ask? Well, because you get you do get the self factor of three. And so you get from that one point, you yourself get a lot of bonus mana, right? Your allies don't get as much, okay? Unfortunately. Uh, if you have like a Zeus mid or whatever, then you might want to get a couple extra points. But realistically, people are building Frostbite because it holds the heroes for longer and you can kind of really punish heroes that are out of position. 
However, it's the build that's important here. You actually are starting with a stick. Why build a stick? That's crazy. You're bringing regen up front. You're going to be blocking this. Okay, the reason why, okay, first of all, there's you know, a lot of items here. You, you're going to be using this sentry ward to either unblock your camp, but most importantly, you need to block their camp so that you can kind of maintain lane equilibrium. You're going tranquil boots into soul ring. Tranquil boots into soul ring. Well, the reason for this is because you can utilize the soul ring effect of basically sacrificing HP for mana, getting that mana, and it actually does not impact tranquil boots. The regeneration of, re of uh, tranquil boots will continue through the damage of or the HP removal of soul ring, which is great. Then you get magic wand. Why? Because it gives you so much effective HP. Because if someone goes on you and you have a magic wand as a crystal maiden, that's a huge burst of HP. Huge burst of HP. Plus, you got strength and armor from your soul ring, right? Not insignificant. Not insignificant. And then you need a defensive item. In some games, it's Force Staff. In other games, it's Glimmer Cape, right? In some games, it's Ghost Scepter, like if you're against like something like a PA or something like that. Regardless, and then from there, you are going Agnum Shard, and this is kind of the meat of the build. The Agnum Shard, which allows you to basically cast your, uh, cast your ult, move slowly, and cast other abilities during your ultimate into bkb so now you can no longer be stunned while doing set ultimate into blink dagger you are literally going to be in a situation where you can set up a team fight with bkb blink alt and then with your shard just casting all your abilities and what's crazy about this is people often forget that while you have freezing field active you have 20 bonus armor okay you have 20 bonus armor here people miss this 20 bonus armor you have armor from your soul ring you have a BKB, so now you can't be stunned anyway, unless there's like a Beastmaster or something, or a Tusk, but whatever, that's a whole other conversation. So they're going to try and right-click you, but you have armor from Soul Ring, a tremendous amount of armor for Freezing Field. You're actually surprisingly hard to kill, plus you have a level 10 talent that gives you 250 HP. So the new way to build CM is as this like blinking ultimate initiator, which is kind of cool to see, because traditionally she's been like this backline caster that just kind of dies all the time, right? But now she's a significant part of team fights. It's a much more active way of playing Crystal Maiden. So I wanted to update you guys with this because if you're a Crystal Maiden enjoyer, which many of us are, you like to see opportunities to play her a little differently, right? And the nice thing, oh, you might think, Alex, what's the extension of here? Well, if you're having a super long game, then it's usually your Agnum Scepter, which is, wow, that item guide is so broken. My God. Anyways, well, that reminds me, um, I did do a complete beginner's guide on Crystal Maiden, which I'll link up above if you're brand new to the hero and like to learn. Um, but uh, it'll give you an idea of how to utilize your skills and stuff like that. But regardless, Agnum Scepter is pretty good too if you're building this build. But uh, regardless, guys, that's the new way to play Crystal Maiden. Thank you so much for watching. And a very special thank you to all of our wonderful subscribers. We'll see you in the next Dota 2 video.